Welcome back to the Tiger's Den Podcast, guys. Before we get started, you know what we got to do. Smash that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're brand new. And don't forget to hit that bell. Join the Noti Squad. And hit those links down in my description. Follow your boy on Facebook, Twitter, and IG at Big C God Game. Well, our Tigers make it eight in a row as they beat up BYU 49-24 to was your final. It was a lot closer than what the score is saying. Uh, BYU's offense is really pretty good, and so is their defense. Uh, as you can see, we kind of were we were even throughout uh, four, 14 in the first quarter, 14 in the second, 14 in the third, and then seven in the fourth quarter. Cody Walker finished the day 18 of 26, 282 yards, three touchdowns and an interception. He completed 69% of his passes. Great game for Cody. Uh, real solid. Definitely carved up their secondary uh, because the run game was kind of quiet this week, man. Pierre Jackson finished the game with 17 carries. For 105 yards and two touchdowns, uh, he's actually below his carrying attempts. Uh, I would like to see him get like 20 to 25 a game, but, you know, when the passing game is clicking, we got to feed the hot hand. Out wide, Antonio Walker led the way with five grabs for 63 yards and a touchdown. Bobby Smith, three catches for 30 yards and a touchdown. Shout out to Tim Clark, three catches for 50 yards. And Will Carter also had three catches for 50 yards and a touchdown. Mike Harper had two catches for 40 yards. Hicks had one catch for 32. And Kevin Easley had one catch for 17. Walker spread the ball around this week and did a great job hitting his weapons. On defense, Travis Haley led the way with nine tackles, two for loss. Shout out to Brent Stovall, man. Six uh, tackles on the day. Two interceptions this game. Uh, he did get burnt a couple times by, I think his last name is Thomas, uh, but he did pick off King twice. Caleb Causey doing Caleb Causey things. Six tackles, three for loss, two sacks on the day. Dan Berg gets into the act as well. He had a sack on the day. So did Big Mike Anderson. He got to the quarterback. And look, even our quarters are trying to get in the act. Aaron Wilkinson had a sack. Let's dig deeper into these stats, though. BYU put up a great fight, man. They outrushed uh, us big time, 220 yards to 124. Uh, they outthrew us. Oh, no, we outthrew them by three yards. They had more first downs. Uh, they had a better third down rate, 7 to 13, while we were 2 of 6. We were 1 on 1 on fourth down. Um, but the three turnovers were costly for BYU. Uh, they had two interceptions and a fumble. Big shout out to Eldon O'Connor. He is my player of the game. He took the opening kickoff back 106 yards. Yeah, he took it back 106 yards. He finished the day with 256 return yards. The kid is something special. He was the number one running back coming out of his class last season, and uh, he's showing why he's such a dangerous weapon for these Tigers. So we put a bow on week nine and take a look at the latest rankings. Grambling State still sitting at your number one spot. Followed by number two, Oklahoma State. They're up two spots. Pittsburgh's up three spots to three. Army is up three, or up a spot to four. Excuse me. Ohio State jumps up four spots to five. BYU falls three spots to six. Uh, Texas is up a spot to seven. Penn State down six spots to eight. Mississippi State is up three spots to nine. And Oklahoma rounds out your top ten. So we are in a bye week, and it's time to take a look at the recruiting board and welcome the newest members to our recruiting class. Let's start things off with four-star athlete Corey Banks from Mississippi. He's 6'4", 294, and from the look of things, he's going to be a beastly D tackle, 81 tackling, 77 hit power, 79 pursuit. Uh, he's got an 81 power move and a 71 finesse move. I'm excited to see what he can add to our already stout defensive line. Also committing this week is Ruben Brown, the 5'11", 211-pound athlete from Texas. And he's got a great skill set as well. He's got 90 speed, 81 agility. But look at his man coverage, 86 man coverage, 80 zone coverage. Uh, the only thing I'm not a fan of is that 55 press. Uh, we will be working on him with that. He is going to be a quarterback for our defense, even though he can play running back as well. We'll have a new punter going into next season. This is Derek McBride. He's uh, the number 11 ranked punter in the country right now from Fairfield, California. He's a three-star with strong leg power, man. He's got an 82 kick power, 74 kick accuracy. Uh, we don't do a lot of punting, but when we do, we like to make sure we pin those guys back deep. 
but I think this might be the biggest signing so far this season. This is Brant Smith. He's 6'4", 293, a tackle from Georgia. He's actually the number four ranked tackle in this class. And this kid is going to be some special, y'all. 86 pass block, 81 run block, 78 impact block, uh, 82 strength. He is a left tackle for sure. Uh, I think Chris Murphy is back for one more year, so he'll be able to sit behind Chris and learn and grow and come in and probably be the most dominant dominant tackle we've ever had on campus. Right now, Granville State has the number three ranked class in the country behind USC and Ohio State, but it's still early, and we have a lot of prospects that will be on campus next week. So we sent through the bye week, and we welcome one more player. He just committed. This is Will Jude, the number 21-ranked defensive end from Florida. He's 6'2", 229, and he's going to be a great pass rusher, man. 77 speed, 69 agility, 84 acceleration. He's got a 79 power move, 80 block shed. He gets after it, too, man, 72 pursuit. He's got decent play rec, tackling, and hit power. Uh, Coming in, he will probably get a lot of playing time his freshman year. So we're winding down season eight, and we have another top three matchup. This week, we're taking on 8-0 Oklahoma State. They have a great record. They have a great season going so far, man. They've beaten Oregon, uh, Texas A&M, uh, Oklahoma by a touchdown. They went into overtime with West Virginia, won by a field goal, and they blew out Baylor. Oklahoma State is led by junior QB Matt Cotton. He's thrown for 1,728 yards, 21 touchdowns, and only two interceptions. He is a dual threat. He's got 83 speed, 86 awareness, and has got a decent arm, 87 throw power, and 88 accuracy. Look for Brandon Ginn and Brian Chase to be his shadow this week. On the ground, Jarvis Jenkins leads the team in rushing. He's got 96 carries for 622 yards and four scores. His backup is Keith Hawkins, 69 carries for 309 and four scores. And like we said, Cotton is a dual threat, 83 carries for 307 and two touchdowns. Out wide, this passing game is elite. Adam Newsom leads the team and catches with 61, yards with 838, and touchdowns with nine. Another guy we got to keep an eye on is Demarcus Weber, 37 catches for 508 and six scores. And then you have Rashad Graves, the slot, 16 catches for 230 and three scores. Uh, Our defense is going to be in trouble this week, man. We're going to have to make sure we cover these guys well. Look for Stovall to be on Newsom all game. And uh, we just got to make sure our other corners are coming ready to play. On defense, the captain, Will Carey, leads the team with 52 tackles, followed by his linebacker mate, Roger Jones. He's got 40 tackles on the season. Then you have cornerback Chad Richards. He's got 30 tackles on the season. Oklahoma State can get after the quarterback. Carey leads the team with four and a half sacks. Followed by a freshman, Trevor Dawson. He's got two and a half sacks on the season. Big D tackle, Anthony Harvey. He's six foot 278. He's got a, a sack and a half. Then Roger Jones has a sack and a half. Then Richard, Whitehead, Wheeler, and White each have a sack. It looks like their secondary doesn't force a lot of turnovers. Uh, Justin Bradshaw leads the team with two interceptions, followed by Sean Smith. He has one. Carey has one. Richard has one. Derek Robinson has one, and so does Rodney Wade. Let's dig deeper into this Oklahoma State roster. So we'll start things off looking at the Oklahoma State offensive line. They have an 85 overall left tackle, an 82 overall left guard. Their center is an 87 overall Follow with his backup, Ricky Campbell. He's an 86 overall. Their right guard, Andre Garrett, is a 76 overall. And their right tackle is an 84 overall. So this should be an interesting matchup for our defensive line. I still like Caleb Causey. I like Sellers and Anderson to get after the quarterback this week. Now on defense, Dawson is a 72 overall. His linemate, Tim Lawrence, he's a 69 overall, a true freshman seeing him play in time. Up the middle is Brandon White. He's an 84 overall. Harvey is an 83 overall. And then White is an 82 overall. So a nice stack uh, at defensive tackle. At linebacker, Roderick Jones leads the way. He's an 84 overall. Brandon McCullough, middle linebacker, he's an 80 overall with 83 speed. Then you have the captain, Will Carey. He's an 84 overall. 84 speed, 92 acceleration. And in the secondary, Richard leads the way. He's an 87 overall. Smith is an 84 overall. Derek Robinson is an 81 overall. And then their fourth corner is Ross Bullock. He's an 74 overall with 88 speed. 
At free safety, there's Justin Bradshaw. He's an 83 overall, but that guy is fast. 97 speed, 93 acceleration, and it says he's a hard hitter. Then you have Steven Jefferson at strong safety, 89 overall, 83 speed, 77 acceler- or 77 agility, excuse me, and 93 acceleration. So it is the game of the week. Number one, Grambling State versus number three, Oklahoma State, and Herbie is rolling with the Tigers. We will have some players on campus this week. Number 66 tight end, Mike Robinson, and Mills, an outside linebacker from Florida. Excited to have those guys on campus to witness this one, man. Yo, if you guys are excited, make sure you smash that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're brand new. Don't forget to ring that bell. Join the Noti squad and hit those links down in my description. Follow your boy on Facebook, Twitter, and IG at Big C Gat Gang. And before we get out of here, a lot of people have been asking me to show my slider set. So here we go. It's Heisman everything, eight-minute quarters. I got the threshold down to 10. Here are the game rules. 95 for offsides and false starts. 70 for holding. Uh, Your face mask is going to be a 55. You got to be careful with that one because you're going to get a face mask penalty. If you go anything higher than a 55, face mask will be called on every play. Uh, Offensive pass interference, defensive pass interference up to 100. So it's kick interference. Those Those never get called. Then you got clipping down to a 50. Intentional grounding, which never gets called is 100. Uh, Roughing the passer is down to 45 because if you go any higher, that gets called every time as well. And then your roughing the kicker is up to a 60. So here is my slider set. Uh, I got this from Operation Sports. It's a little bit tougher. Uh, I bumped a lot of stuff down. My QB accuracy is down to 10. Pass blocking is down to 10. Wide receiver catching is down to 5. My running ability is 25. Run blocking is 0. Uh, Pass coverage is a 50. Interceptions is down to 35. My rush defense is a 65. Tackling is down to 50. Kick uh, field goal power is 50. Field goal accuracy is 30. Punt power, accuracy, and kickoff power are both 50. Taking a look at the computer sliders, their QB accuracy is a 45. Uh, Their pass blocking is a 60. Their wide receiving catching is a 70. Their running ability is up to a 65. Run blocking is a 50. I got their pass coverage up to 100. Interceptions is a 65. Rush defense and tackling are 100. Kick power is a 50. Accuracy is a 40. Uh, Punt power is a 50. Their punt accuracy is 100. And kickoff power is 50. Yo, if you guys have any more questions about the sliders, feel free to comment down below and let me know what you guys think. Uh, But we will talk from the hall as Grandma State gets ready to take on Oklahoma State. Have a great day, guys. Two fingers in the air. Peace.